Hello, 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 hello. Where am I? I'm in a very lucky spot here in Southern Ireland. I'm with the one, the only, the legend himself as he sits on his perch. Some perch. S some perch a, somewhere. A damp, a damp wall. A damp wall. <laughs> Derek Walsh, you the man. Thanks for having me here today. You're very welcome, Ryan. Congrat Hello, everybody. Congratulations. Now, you tell me why I'm congratulating you today. Well, yesterday we just got the official word that we won the, uh, the best ace pigeon. Uh, the official best ace pigeon in Ireland in the sprint or inland category. He was a super pigeon. He's bred from a uh, pigeon called Superstar Bolt, who was incidentally is also the mother to Bess Sagan, who won first National Flying Club this year. And uh, she's a super hen. You see it on our, on our pedigree there, you know. But he's a five year old pigeon, which was a great achievement for him, you know, at five years of age. So. Just goes to show you. Now, to win that award, hmm. competition, birdage? Three and a half thousand pigeons. Uh, the Fed uh, starts off in, then it dramatically, I won't say dramatically, but it does drop back down to maybe 15, 1600 for some races. And the reason that would be, that race may coincide with a national race. So people will be splitting up their birds and so on, you know? And this pigeon that won this award, mm. the mileage, uh, the, the races he had to do to win this? Uh, because we, I just fly on the south road, which is just down along the south of Ireland, the most we'd be flying is about 130 miles. So the shortest would be 72 to 130, just pure sprint racing. That's exactly what it is. Sprint racing. Yeah, sure. there's no overseas. Um, I mean, the only overseas racing that they do in Ireland is probably over to Talbany in Wales or France, which is more probably suiting the people further up the country in Dublin and, and in particular the north of Ireland, which they have absolutely fantastic pigeons up there. Yes, so in, my, in, in my opinion, they're probably the best in Europe, I would say. The pigeons in North really? Ireland. Oh, they're fantastic. Fantastic, yeah. There's one, <coughs> one guy up there, Ronnie Williamson, and uh, his performances are just mind-blowing. The NAPA is our organization. They race up there maybe 26,000 pigeons. And this guy's on the wind about 80 or 82 or 83 of these events. It's phenomenal, you know. Unbelievable. Ah, oh, sure. It's you know you got to give credit where it's due. It's fantastic. It's unbelievable. Right, and you raced just widowhood cocks. Last year I raced hens and the with 24 widowhood cocks. They did exceptionally well. We had 13 fed races. Um, we won seven feds, 10 seconds, 13 thirds. Um, <clears throat> we took the highest amount of positions ever in the Federation, first 18. Uh, in one of the sections we took, I think, about 48 positions in the section. The following week then, we took uh, the first nine in the National Flying Club, which is a record. And uh, in the Old Birds, we took the first four in the National Flying Club, which is a record as well. Wow, congratulations. The other two Irish national races are called the IHUNFC. This is the Irish version of the INFC. And the guy that won those is a guy by the name of uh, Lenny Bulger, or Bulger family. And the pigeons that he won that with, we bred here. So we bred the four national winners and the four seconds, the four tours and so on. Wow, so it was great. Congratulations. Was Birds, great, uh, yeah. And the family of pigeons that you're, you're working with? Family of with? pigeons that we have um, are mostly from the Olympiad. The Olympiad 03, and in particular, the DiCaprio line. Now, we were holding roughly around 37, 38 grandchildren of the Caprio, which is a phenomenal amount of the Caprio pigeons. Some of them are double grandchildren, and they're all passing their gene on to the winner, so it's, it's great. Recently, then, I introduced some Van den Bulks from my good friend Marcel Sangers with the Olympiad pigeons, and they have uh, gelled very, very nicely. Plus, in addition, we have a little bit of pit bull in there, a little bit of Carl Lane pit bull. Results are good with all of them. Good with them. They blend it perfect, you know, but it's like anything, you know. All these pigeons, they're all, they're all just names of pigeons. Mm -hmm. It's what you put into them. It's the work you put into them as well. And Now, you fly a, uh, basically a widowhood system? Yes. Well, this year, uh, as opposed to last year, I had the hens racing, the hens and the cocks, but the... The cock's done so much better. I thought to myself, you know, 
the more time I'm putting into the hens, the less I'm putting into the cocks. So I decided this year I'm not going to race any hens. They're just going to partner the uh, the widowhood cocks. So we've doubled our widowhood team from 24 to 51 widowhood cocks this year. Primarily the, the most of them would be our, our yearlings, which would, wouldn't have had any more than three, three races. You know, we've only had two federation races last year in the Youngbirds, and we ended up runner-up in it. We won the old bird averages, and we won the giant averages as well, you know, in right. the federation. So. Now, looking over here, you've got some beautiful lofts. Oh, thank uh, you. The, the, the main <coughs> loft here with the tile, the tile roof. <coughs> Mm. This is your race lofts? Yeah, these are the race lofts. These lofts are called the Royale lofts and they're, they were built by my good friend Peter Hall from Petron Lofts in 2015. Peter was over here himself to oversee the, the construction of them. And they went up, I have to say, in a couple of days. They were, they were, they were brilliant, you know? Yeah. The, what? But this one here on the left-hand side, <clears throat> mm -hmm. this is the young birds. Okay. What we had up here then, half of that up there prior to this season, right. was the widowhood cocks. So the widowhood cocks flying over there where that bit of green is on the... That's the problem with this country. There's too much green everywhere. I've never seen grass oh. this green at this time. <laughs> <It's just laughs> green. Hey, what are you using? Fertilizer on the water or what? <laughs> but it's, it's green. At this time of the year, after the winter, you know, <laughs> it's what does it like, look like, like in I the said you what it's like, it's like, like I said to you last night. It's like I knew with the last for a few drinks without having a shower. <laughs> yeah. What is it like in the summer? Is it still green? Uh, look, we just spray it and it kills all the green. It makes you feel better about what you're doing as well. You, you don't see any of that stuff around, you know. Now, I uh, I noticed this loft looks like it's slightly off the ground. It is. Okay. It is. Well, the, there's a gradient on the ground, so it's more or less level with it over here on the left-hand side, going to about four feet on the right-hand side. Okay. But you'll see it when you go in. They're all grills and, and, and so on, you know? Well, let's go take a peek, can we? Let's take the tour. Here we are, guys. Derek Walsh, the man. This is Southern Ireland. What town is this, Derek? Waterford. Waterford. It's a lovely place here in Waterford. Oh, yeah. Waterford Crystal. Straight across over here at the river, you can see with the, with the camera, you'll see a better view of it. Waterford Castle is, is just over here. Now, is you'll it, see is it. it true that... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You live in the castle? Shh. Don't tell anyone that. Uh, oh, this is uh, one of my little pet pigeons. These are just some of the hens that uh, I haven't bred from some of the stock pigeons, but this is a pet of mine here. Oh, yeah, I love it. Ooh, ooh. She is from. See, she's looking at you now, and she's. Uh, I'm a good looking kind of guy. Well, this is, this is it, you know. You gotta watch bringing a guy like me in. So she's coming right I, back to you. But I have warned her before you came. You have what you did. I put her on, on notice. She is bred from, her father is a full brother of the First National Lace KBDB, Sagan. Wow. And her mother is a daughter of Zwart Pitbull, who incidentally, Zwart Pitbull is the mother to First National Flying Club this year from Skibbereen in the Youngbirds. Oh, they all like you. Yeah. Come, these dogs. Right, let's get on with it. <clears throat> So now we come in here, this is normally the young bird section. This is the young bird section, yeah. So just a regular Avery? Just a regular Avery. There was, there used to be um, traps here that they okay. used to trap in. So I took them out mm -hmm. and what I do, these were built by Jeff Greenway, Universal Pigeon Lofts. Jeff does a, a superb product, I have to say, is well known all over Europe. But I use these both here just to water the um, the young birds. That's where the young birds drink from here. I put, that, that, I put drill holes in the end of it so there's any spillage out from it that they're not drinking that dirty water, you know. And this is a great for getting them used to being on the transporter. Yeah, but then again, I thought about that. I thought about this, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you know what? When they drink out of the hampers in the in the in the in the transporter, it's open on the other side, right? So. I leave it open when they're drinking out of it. Okay. Because the other way they're only used to drinking out of it, but it's closed. So I get me used to drinking when there's open space around them, you know? Right. And I see you. You know, it's just, a, it's just a little bit. It's and I see you have multiple ones of these. Yeah, I have them there, and that's for the, uh, that's for the young birds when they come in. The young birds come in through over here. <clears throat> It's colored different on the inside. 
so when the pigeons are out and they see that it's white all along, they know the traps are open, as opposed to having it dark then on the other side. So that there's a perp there's a reason why that's painted. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, look, it's, they're just little extra things and some maybe they don't work, but you know. How do you get the result? The little things is what makes you work. A lot of little things put together. Okay, so we gotta take notes, guys. Remember, Look at these Derek two. Walsh. Now, do these do these guys, these two guys here, they play a role in it as well? Oh yeah. You wanna be a brave man to come in the gate <laughs> without me here? <laughs> I know. I tried it last night. <laughs> I lost my good pair of pants. <laughs> so this is the young bird loft. This is the young bird loft. Okay. At the moment, what's in here? I put on the lights so more better visibility. So these are some of the pigeons that are going, which are good self and feathers elite. Ones that are going for auction. So very, very nice, simple young bird section. You got the graded floors. Grilled floors, the Hermes boxes. Incidentally, it's the only place where I have the Hermes boxes. How do you find them work for you? Oh, they're very good, you know. A um, little bit of maintenance on them, but uh, overall, they're, 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 they're quite good. And this section here on the inside is, is how large? This is 22 feet long. 22 feet long. Yeah. And you've got this nice, I guess you would say this is what, like a hallway inside? Four foot hallway, yeah. Four foot hallway. And if I want to, you know, the pigeons are never fed here. Okay. Never fed here. Where do you feed them? I'll show you that. So no feeding is done in this section with the young birds? None. This is a particularly nice, Catch me. Jesus, I'm getting too old to bend it down. Oh, there's a pigeon in here I really like. I'm gonna have to look at him again. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. This is, uh, I bred some of these from, the father of this pigeon is a pigeon called Nero. He will be the father to Trigger, who was first up North Combine, 11,000 pigeons. And he's went on to breed some uh, great fed winners for us in top 10 fed and national positions. The mother of the pigeon, is a daughter of Bess Kittle, when Bess Kittle was paired to a sister of Olympic Rosita. Olympic Rosita is the, as you know, the mother of Kittle. Right. But uh, she's also, the mother of this pigeon is also a full sister to First National Lays KBDB 2020. Wow. Bred by Pippa. Elite breeding center. So he's very nice, but these pigeons will stay, you know, they won't go anywhere. Beautiful. So the youngsters here, you darken them? Yes. <clears throat> They're darkened up to around the 21st of June. That's when you start darkening. And I, do you know what? The 21st of June can't come quick enough. <laughs> Most people have electric blinds and they just walk away, but I have to do everything manual and it can be a bit So the 21st of June, you take them off the dark? Yeah. Okay. Some people just leave them on for a certain period of time, but I just prefer to just stay with 21st you, of June. Do you find these sliders you close often or no? No, I leave them open, but funny enough, the more you pull them across, the more intensity there is in the, in the air. The in pull the, of the air. Yeah. They say that the, the, the ventilation shouldn't be any more than three inches over the, the height of the top pigeon. Um, these <clears throat> vents that I have here on the bottom, they're always closed, always. In always fact, closed. Not only just closed, but they're actually blocked off as well, as you can see. So there's no air coming through no, the front? No, none. It all comes in over and the And do roof. you normally have these windows open? At night I would leave them open, yeah. Only at night? I leave them open the whole time. Okay. If it's rain, sometimes you might, because it's, that would be the uh, weather point. So the rain will always pelt in this way. And um, if, depending on the wind, uh, you see the winds over here are predominantly northwesterly wind, which would be this way. And sometimes it can drive the rain in. So I just pull them across a little bit. Just leave enough for the pigeon to get in and get out. That's all okay. you need. That's Quite it. simple. So you don't feed them in here, you darken them? Darken them in you here. You divide the sexes? No, I leave them open. Some people have cocks and hens, and it depends on what way they raise them, you know? To me, that's an awful lot of work, and I don't think I have the time for it, even though I'm doing this full time to be racing cock uh, young birds and hen young birds. And I just prefer, my method is to prefer just to do everything on a team basis, just on a team basis. Some beautiful pigeons in here. Yeah, come on in here now. <laughs> 
All right. Mr. Spielberg. Well, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking, Derek. You know what I say, you know, and I'm allowed to yeah. shop with my eyes. So these ones here, the white pies are all inbred Van den Bulk pigeons. This cock over here is a, oh, stay. No, he's gone. No, I won't chase him. He is bred from, the father of that pigeon is a pigeon called Bonton Dirk, who will be a half brother to the father of Kittle and Greipel. He's up there, I'll show him to you later on. And his mother is a double granddaughter of Olympic Rosita, which genetically would be the same as a daughter of Olympic Rosita. The loft smells real good. Mm -hmm. The loft smells yeah, so good. Yeah, well, they shouldn't really smell of pigeons. No, it smells like candy, man. Yeah? Yeah, it has a, must be the, uh, the grits and the minerals. Yeah. Super health on these pigeons. They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, the waddles are chalk white. They look like little neon lights, eh, on their yeah. noses. Here's one I want to show you here now. All right. Kill two birds with the one stone. And Again, you're at oh. Derek Walsh. Oh. This South is, Ireland. Yeah. It's Waterford, correct? Waterford, yeah, in the south of Ireland. Waterford. Isn't this where the Beatles got their start? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> well, if it was, it's certainly where they should have finished. <laughs> right, this is just want to show, take the opportunity here if anyone is looking. Yeah. I've recently donated a pigeon to the Up North Combine. Mm -hmm. I put them up on Facebook the other night. So rather than me taking a video, if anyone's looking in, this is the pigeon that's going towards the Up North Combine. He is um, a son from a pigeon called Stardust, who is the daughter of Goldust, who recently sold for 184,000. The mother of the pigeon is a daughter of Strike, which is, she's also well, a granddaughter, a granddaughter of um, the brother of the Good Road, and she's also the mother of Trigger. So he's a half brother to all the big name stars, eh? Yeah, he's a half brother to Trigger, first up North Combine, 11,000 pigeons. And these pigeons here, they specialize in the distance? No, they're all sprint. I don't have any distance pigeons because I, I can't fly it. No, but I'm saying that they, they, they really excel. Oh yeah, well. From, from 50 to what, 200 miles? Yeah, well they're well proven before they came over here, you know. Right. Dirk Van Den Bulk and Patrick Box and, and so on, you know. So yeah, they're, uh, they're very nice, they're great health, I must say. So let's see how you feed the youngsters or where you feed them. Oh look, there's a secret door right there, isn't that? That's just a window going into. Okay. I'm just checking, eh? Gotta see, make sure there's no secret passages. No, absolutely none. <laughs> absolutely none. The mind the steps, like the barman. Mind the step coming out. <laughs> now these are the, where I would keep the hens that are paired to the widowhood cocks. Individuals. Yeah, and they're all just little trays, so they're all self-closing. Because it's winter, the timber tends to swell a little bit. I have to power wash them all out and clean them all out after last season. So the hens are left in there. Okay, let's see that. Yeah. The whole time, during the day, they've taken out and fed, and they've bathed them, whatever the case may be. The blinds are pulled across on them pigeons all day. The blinds? So, so, yeah, so, the curtains. So you just pull that right across and that's yeah. it? And yeah, and they're left there all day because then they're not looking at me. Right. As good looking as I am paired up yeah, to me. Yeah. I will say, <laughs> is it true you used to be yes, a Calvin? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so he was a Calvin Klein model. Come on. <clears throat> all right. They go in here. So this is the widowhood loft. Okay. Have any of the Limerick hurlers, I wonder, expressed an interest in trying Do you know why I leave the radio on? Because they like the music. Yeah, like no, because it's very lonely down here for me on my own. <laughs> so this is a more of a you thing. Yeah. So the, the young birds, you were asking me about the young birds. Mm -hmm. um, the young birds trap through here. And um, they're fed on a clean tray. In here? Sterilized, yeah, here. And they're fed here, okay. and my hands are always with them, going through them, rubbing off them. They're familiar with my hands the whole time. Okay. So they relate me to food. They relate you to food? Yeah, because I'm, I'm the one who's feeding them. So the trays are here, you feed them, any spillage goes down and through? There won't be any spillage, because I only give it to them, and they eat it, and they only get some more then, and so on. That's a handful that's by right. handful, pretty well, much? Well, whatever, yeah, they get X amount. Sometimes, you know, with young birds, <clears throat> it's all about discipline, I think, with, with young birds, but 
I said to a friend of mine, you know, one time, you know when you're feeding the young birds and you know when they have enough and they still want more mm -hmm. and you're compelled and you feel like, yeah, Jesus, look, because I love them so much, I'll give them more. Right. But I often thought to myself, you know, I said, if Vincent O'Brien, the horse trainer, was a, was, a, was a pigeon financier, would he give them more? He wouldn't. No. So you, you got to cut him off. You got to cut him off. That's you got to know when Yeah, to you got to have discipline yourself, you know. Okay. So here we have, this is the widowhood loft. Come on. This is a very special loft. These are all the, now, I'll be, I'll be quiet. So these are all the hens, or well, some hens and cocks, I don't know what's going on there. They're cleaned out once a day. Now, I will say, it's not every day I clean them out. If something was going on, if I have to leave them for two days, it's not every day you feel like cleaning them out either, you know? Okay. They're hard work. They're hard work, but these are all bred from all the breeders. All the boxes are all individually marked. So each of, what's that? So each of the hens, each of the hens <clears throat> that go back into the box will have a corresponding red number 13 ring, number eight, number three, or whatever. So I will know then what's going on with them. Okay? Wow. I only developed this part of it this year. Okay. Because prior to that, we only had this end of it up here. So, mind the drinker, they don't trip over it. This is another half brother to trigger. This fella is like the guy that you liked last night would be his brother. This fella has been two first feds. He arrived with first INFC as well. He is a half brother to the ace pigeon. He's a super pigeon, that fella. He's had fantastic results. Question, Darren. <clears throat> Why do you have the red behind some of the boxes? Why would you say no? I'm just asking. Just keeps it clean. <laughs> just keeps it clean. <laughs> some things are simple, you know. <laughs> you know what? Just keeps it clean. Doesn't do anything else. Okay. <laughs> keeps it clean. <laughs> That's all, you know. Okay. Oh. Now, do you know why I didn't have it on the rest of them? <laughs> because I didn't have enough. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're with Derek Walsh. <laughs> Told you. We're in Ireland now. It's going to be all right. Okay. Okay, come on. Don't lie now. This is, this is Board Plus. This is the guy who's the ace pigeon. Hey, I want you to keep it down. Yeah, this he, is the ace pigeon. Yeah, he's a five-year-old. He's a five-year-old. Hey, you know what? He looks so good here. Imagine how nice he'd look at my loft. Yeah. Could you imagine? Or someone else's. No, he actually got a, a red. Red one, too, as well, yeah. <laughs> Do you ever put stars or stickers? Now, hey, I noticed in here it smells like brute. Brute? <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, hold on, hold on, dear. I, I these, are, these are here. These things are here. Right. Oh, shit. Are we allowed to open the door? <laughs> are we allowed? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, boy. That's the left manager. <laughs> 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 are we going to see a big lawn gnome or something? That's me mate Tony, how she with the patients she's in there. Okay. <laughs> Flaherty. That's for what I do is all the nest balls go in there. Nest right. balls go in. The nest there. balls, yeah. I take them out when the cocks when I'm finished with the you know when they're finished with the nest balls? Yeah. I put them all back in there. Mm -hmm. So they're all put back in in an order. Chronological order. Do you like so that you, word? Basically what you're trying to say is because I'm doing some research while I'm here. I noticed this cock's got nest bull number three. Yes, and because he's in nest bull number, because he's in nest three. So they will all get their own bowls back. They won't be getting another bowl back. I mean, would you know the difference if you slept in somebody else's bed rather than your own? I've been sleeping in, in hotels. <laughs> it's probably no bother to you. <laughs> I'm feeling real itchy lately. I said to a friend of mine one time, I said, would you have any bother sleeping in somebody else's bed? I'd have no bother with that. <laughs> Okay, you're, you're, we're, we're really making moves here today. Now, how come this loft, what? It, they don't, they, none of the birds are moving. It's, I've never seen this before. Well, I've told them to be on their best behavior. Okay, this is incredible, super calm. Best behavior. I can feel there's an energy in this, in this section. <gasps> 
this is is a lovely cock this fella he's one of first fed from he's also a nest brother to a pigeon called Batash that I bred for Lenny Bulger who's been I think he's had two first feds and one first national what a beauty this guy is right here the white oh flag. yeah his father yeah is a double grandson of DiCaprio. And you love these DiCaprio pigeons. Oh, they are the business. He, they are, he's ended up having a good couple of wins. Fort National, second phase. Now these birds aren't fighting you, they're, they're... No, because I'm with them every day of the week. They just see me as part of their team. Now, having said that, I could go to try and catch one and you could fly all over the loft. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Now, I just, you just do your best with them, that's all. I notice you've got one guy here on the floor. Yeah. Does that bother you? It did at the beginning, but um, it's any better off sitting on eggs down there than not sitting on eggs at all. So at least if he's going to rear a couple of youngsters there, you know, I, I asked a friend of mine about that, and he said to me, just get a bit of plywood and pull it over the, over the bowl, leave the bowl there, put plywood over it. Just take away the plywood, the same as you're putting the nest bowl into the other boxes, and he'll respond to it the very same. Now, I haven't tried that yet, so I'll let you know how that goes around July. <laughs> So this is your widowhood loft. Now, do you yeah. feed them also? These, the widowhood cocks will always be fed in their boxes. Okay. Always in the box. Always. Why? Because that's, you know, you know, do the cocks fly home to the boxes or do they fly home to the hen? Or is it both? But whatever it is, it's all about bonding and that's their territory. And if they're getting fed in it, I should probably be giving them water in it as well, but it's too much work. Too much work. So if they're getting their food, they come in, they come straight in. When I call them, they're straight in and straight up to their boxes. They know exactly what's going on. I've never seen a loft where every bird so, in the nest like the this. cocks. The cocks will always be. Here we are, Derek Walsh, we're in the widowhood loft. And they all have to be all have to be sterilized and rinsed. But these are the pots that the pigeons will be fed in. Okay. They're all just full just of just dust now for the year. Just a standard galley pot. No, they're not. Yeah. That's why I took it out to show you. They're not a standard galley pot. See? They're all polished, glazed, and they're not porous. They're wiped clean every day or disinfected every day, twice a day when they're being fed in. Because health is so important. I couldn't put enough emphasis on health and cleanliness. Yeah, those are the ceramically. Yeah. With the glaze. So nothing can live in there. No, you clean it. it can but the other ones, the porous ones. Yeah. The, 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 the pick stone pots. Different. Isis could live in the other one. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There you go. <laughs> But these ones are just, they're clean, so nothing else in it. They're disinfected twice a day. But it just adds, or re, what it does, not that it adds, but it probably removes anything that could go wrong, you know, in, in the feeding process. Here we are, Derek Walsh. I just try to keep it simple, Ryan, you know? The Widowhood Loft. Hey, Derek, I want to uh, thank you for bringing me in here. You're more than welcome. I've never seen this before at this level. You can feel there's something different in here. Is it the green grass? It's probably all the green around the place. I don't know. I don't know. I put on the floor there, <coughs> we put down marmoleum on the floor. So it's just cleaned every day, you know, rather than having the timber. And uh, so nothing can live. It's non-porous, you know. So I just try to do uh, as much as I can to help the pigeons. At the end of the day, we raise the pigeons for enjoyment and so on, and we try to make it as easy as possible for the pigeons to come home and to compete at their highest level. There's lots of people out there uh, seem to get pleasure in as making it as tough as possible for the pigeons. I, can't, I could never understand that mentality. They, if they could put lead weights on the backs of pigeons, they would. Uh, I can't, can't understand that. Why they would be. Some people want to raise pigeons in really strong winds and you know, they're not happy to just race the pigeons and uh, compete. Oh. But they want to make it a, a marathon for them. 
Guys, there you have it. The inside look at a Super Widowhood Loft Sprint Machine. Derek Walsh. Thank you, Derek, for bringing us in You're here. You're more than welcome. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. Cheers, Derek. Thanks, Ryan. We're Come heading on. to Derek Walsh. His new, your, this is what, your new adventure, Derek? New location where the lofts are going to move to, racing lofts and uh, the breeding lofts and so on, yeah? Yeah. Uh, we're going to move them over here. Um, so all the end, the end of the year and next year, so this will, I won't be racing pigs next year um, because the lofts will be coming down and take a bit of time out for a while and uh, get re-established over here, you know. Oh, it's windy up here, eh? It sure is. Now what's this water we see here, Derek? I told people that's my fish pond, but they just wouldn't believe me. No, that's the, like that's, that's, the, that's the river shore. That's the boundary between. That's, walk, that's Waterford over there. Right. And this is Kilkenny here. So the boundary. How do you name a beer after this? Hmm? There's a beer. What? What's the name of where we are here now? Kilkenny? Yeah. What beer? There's a I beer. Never, oh, that was years ago. There was a beer called Kilkenny. Yeah, that was, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. Come on, boys. Come. So, yeah. <laughs> We're after getting planning permission here to build a house and uh, all the lofts are going along down here, all along the bottom. So, so you're going to build lofts right here on the water? Yeah. Down in the bottom there? Yes. Nice location for them, isn't it? This kind of fairy tale like. Yeah. Do you think there's, there's Waterford Castle over here. Just give people a location of where we're situated here in Ireland, you know? Right. And, and where, where you're pointing here with your hands? That would be towards France. <laughs> That's towards France. <laughs> what we race is down this way. This way. Now you feel the wind is coming right into our face. That's the prevailing winds come from the west. Right. And, and the north, you know, in Ireland. So this right here is gonna be your new location? Yeah. And are you gonna move those lofts or are you just gonna leave them? No, we're gonna move them over. Oh, geez. Yeah. And add as well? Hmm? And add as well? Yeah, with the, the current breeding lofts that are there, we'll just dismantle them and do away with and put new breeding lofts on the bottom here. So it'll probably be maybe 150, 200 feet of, how, of loft. How do you find hawks or falcons in this area? Yeah, the falcons don't seem to bother me, to be honest with you. When I came here first, I had a, I had a terrible problem with them. Um, Sparrowhawks. I remember one year in 2015, you look, I didn't know anything because the last time I had pigeons was um, in 1982 and we didn't have that problem with hawks, so it was all new to me, so I had to learn about them. But in 2015, we lost 53 young birds around the, around the house here from sparrowhawks. We're living in the country. So I asked Stuart about it, you know, and uh, when we go back over, I'll show you. There was um, mirror balls that we put up onto the roof of the pigeon loft. You see, when you're over there now, you'll see them. Some people may see them from, from, the, from the photographs you've taken. But what they are is that they're a terrain for the sparrowhawk. Because the sparrowhawks are territorial, when they come to attack, they'll see, get, they'll see um, themselves in it, right? It'll break their line of attack enough for the pigeon to get away. But the sparrowhawks, as you know, is March and April. But the, re the main reason why so many pigeons are killed by the sparrowhawks is that the pigeons are too fat. <laughs> they're, in, they're in the loft all winter. And people leave them out and say, you know, sparrowhawk, the pigeons can't get away, they're too fat. Now, what do you do, what do, you do for that problem? Do you keep them on a certain type of diet? Well, when the... Uh... Yeah. Purative in the barley, you know. The purative in the barley. Yeah, they, till they get a bit fit enough to fly a bit, and then you can change their food a bit, you know. But through the winter, when they're not out, still the purative and bar, like a de pure mix. Yeah, I'd use a um, a de purative and a best all round uh, food mixed together. That's what I, keep it simple, you know. And do you feed them till they're packed full? You keep it yeah, measured? Yeah, absolutely. Feed the mold, yeah. Feed the mold. And this year now, I've, you know, I've always been inclined to put stuff in the water, tolly them in, which I still do, but 
Now, of late, I've gone more towards uh, the fresh and clean water. Right. You can't beat fresh, clean water. It flushes out the system, any toxins or anything like that in it, you know? But uh, yeah, I get all my food from, um, give old Henry a plug here, Henry Byrne from Sandy Hill up in Dublin. We use uh, Van Robies. Nice what feed? Oh yeah, it's quite, it's good and it's clean. You know, it's clean feed, yeah. Put anything on the feed? At times, um, at times I will put on a vegetable mix onto the onto the food. Now, question for this vegetable mix? Yeah. Would Trade you, secret. Well, th I was going to say because I know there's used the great Gordon Ramsay, right? Yeah, I didn't and like I does he have pigeons? Well, hold on. <laughs> then there's Derek Walsh. Would you be willing? to maybe cook this up for us so we could see, because I hear you're, you're tremendous with the Ginsu knife. With the Ginsu knife. I don't know, I don't know you're gonna share this secret now with Gordon Ramsay. Wow. If you, share, you have to think if you, about if that. If you share me your Everyone secret, has a price. I'll share you mine. What we do with the, with the um, and it's no secret, you know, to be honest with you, I find with a lot of pigeon people, you could tell them what you do. <laughs> And uh, you know what, it won't make any difference because most of them won't do it anyway. No. You, you can give it to them on what we call the silver platter and they'll tell you I will give them lion. A beet, <laughs> yeah, a beetroot, carrots, onions, uh, garlic, sometimes uh, I might put a bit of lemon in it, apple cider vinegar and put it into the mulcher and just mulch it all up and put it onto the food. The beetroot is great for the pigeons, you know? Beetroot? Yeah, sometimes I put a bit of ginger with it as well. Ginger is great, great to keep away E. coli, you know? <clears throat> So, so they're all natural products, natural products and clean water. But you know what, all these things are all very, they're all great, but the pigeons, the most important factor with, with any of the pigeons and the pigeons health is vaccination. Vaccination? Oh yeah, that is. What do you, what do you like to one. vaccinate for? Um, this year I vaccinated the pigeons for parathyphoid and then they were they've been vaccinated uh, all my products come from Schroeder Tollison they would then be vaccinated for uh, Columbovac with uh, because of this legal requirement and then we will do them with three in one which covers them for paramyxo herpes and adenovirus just one is, vaccine of each yeah one one only yeah there is another one then that it's a pharmavac which does the, the uh, paramyxovirus and the herpes that must be given but it has to be they have to get a booster then within four weeks after the first one so you know so vaccination is very important more important than medications well if you if you vaccinate properly you won't need to do medication okay there you have it Derek the next time I'm here, this is Bring where I'll be. You know, it's kind of nice I got this here on camera, Derek, because we're going to see what it looks like when I come back. Oh yeah, absolutely, you're more than welcome. Where are you putting the water slide? The water slide will be on the left-hand side over by the hedge. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks, Derek. Derek Walsh, Southern Ireland. Talk to me, Derek. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you this pigeon. He's very nice. He's um, a pure Van den Bulk. He's grandson of uh, Goldust and his mother is uh, a direct daughter, well it's not a direct daughter, she's a daughter of dynamic uh, Greipel, son of Greipel above and the mother is a double granddaughter of Kittle so he's pure Dirk van the, van the bulk pigeon. Most unusual for his colouring, I just thought I'd show him to you there. He's right. practically all white. He's got a lot of war paint on him. Mm, I like that war paint. <laughs> yeah. It's quite unusual for his colouring, isn't it? It's not too often you see a pure white. No. I'm more so, more white than, than not than the bulk pigeon. But he's uh, he's one of the pigeons that will that will stay here with us. I've selected maybe about ten of these pies that will that will stay, and he's one of them. He's one of them. So yeah. you don't mind pigeons with colour on them? No. No. A lot of people. A lot of people uh, like blue bars and blue checks and it doesn't really make a difference. I suppose my favourite colour pigeon would be uh, uh, a blue white flight, would be my favourite colour pigeon. Beautiful. Vandenbalk. Mm. He is super pretty.
There's a guy over here on the right hand side. He's um, a grandson of Greipel and Bess Kittle. So there's quite a few of them uh, bred like that. This guy here on the right hand side, the blue with the white flight. His father is um, half brother to the father of Kittle, mm -hmm. and his mother is a uh, double granddaughter of Rosita. Now, these Vandenbach pigeons, mm. how do you find racing them? Oh, they're super pigeons, yeah. Fast? Super, yeah. Intelligent pigeons, great temperament. What do you mean by great temperament? What does that mean? Temperament, you can work with them, you know? They're not crazy pigeons flying all over the pa uh, place on you in the loft, you know? They're, um, there's a grandson of um, Pitbull there. The blue checker on the left is a son from two original. Now, that's a rare pigeon to have, that blue checker. He's uh, a pure Gust Jansen pigeon. Gus Jansen will be the breeder of the Olympia 03. So there is, um, there's quite a, a few pigeons there now would be children from brothers of Sagan, coupled with double granddaughters of the Caprio. There we are, Derek Walsh. Just looking at some pigeons, eh? A little bit of war paint? A little bit you of need, war paint. Do you need a little war paint in your loft? Do you think every loft should have just a little bit? Doesn't really make a difference. I mean, some people don't like colored pigeons, you know? Doesn't bother me at all. Um, doesn't bother me. Some people say that the hawks tend to like colored pigeons. I don't know. Do you believe it? I don't know. You couldn't believe everything people tell you either, you know? There's another grandson of the Caprio down here, the blue. And these are ones that are going with you on Feathers Elite. Van den Bulk inbred Kittle. Beautiful. Here we are. Derek Walsh. He's showing us all the little secrets. What are we looking at here, Derek? What is this room? This is where I would have the... Come up, hey boys, out, out. Come in, Ryan. I'm coming. Oh, look out. Out. This is where I would have the... Uh, any of the pigeon products or stuff that I need, like oregano oil or whatever, it's you know, various bits of products that I would uh, use for the pigeons. I find this is a great product. It's great for when the pigeons come back from the race. You we like this? Fight. Yeah, I think it's excellent. What, what, does it look, what does it smell like? What's it about? I'll tell you what's in it, and it's, it's great. There's um, a certain amount of elderberry juice in it. Pour some in the, in the can. It's not, just enough for you, it's for yeah. the pigeons. <laughs> just a little, whoa! Price of a two dear. So that, that is it there. Can I taste it? You can, you can drink it if you want to. Do you want a gin and tonic with it? Holy jumping, have you tasted that? No, this is for the pigeons. Not have you me. ever tasted that? No. Do you know when you're making a cocktail and you say I need to add that something? That right there will do it, Derek. Yeah, there's elderberry juice in it. Um, so good product, what else? Yeah, the dust through here is for the water, tolimin, omega lectin oil. Is great for the pigeons, it's great in particular when they're breeding. It's a very good product. How do you use it? I use most of my stuff on the food because I know they're getting it all. If you get, if you put it on the water. Um, one sec, more. I've been to there now. One sec. Yeah, you okay, okay, there. Okay. Um, what was the question? That product. You said you like to put it on the feed. You like to eat oh, yeah. products on the feed more than on water. Why? Yeah, because they don't always drink the whole lot of the water, especially in the winter time. So if you put it on the right, uh, administer the right amount on the food, well, then they're going to get it all. But a lot of the time with all the products that you use, and I try to cut back on all them, a lot of this stuff, you know, but the products are great. But what's most important uh, of the product, there's a bit of wheat germ now for fertility. But what's most important is the administration of the product. In other words, the correct amount. The correct amount. Oh, it's very important, yeah. 
just a simple little thing I put on the put on the food once or twice a week. A little bit of garlic and glucose keeps them up, you know. Garlic, glucose, and honey. Yeah, that's for horses. Yeah, sure. And pigeons, you know. There's not much in the difference between horse, horse oh, food and I like food. those 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 drinkers you got there, those glass ones. Where? Those ceramic ones. Yeah. The story on those? Um I will use those drinkers during the racing season. Okay. Because they're non-porous. And it reduces the chance of any contamination in the products, you know. The baskets that we train the pigeons in are the very same baskets that are on the transporter. So nothing has changed from what they're being trained and going in on the, on, the, on the transporter. Everything is the same. There's nothing different. They it's, drink out the back. They will, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the plan anyway. So everything is the same. There's nothing changed. I don't, I had them baskets there, but I, I got them from a very good friend of mine, John Whitaker, when he gave up the pigeons in 2015. But I don't really use them that often but they're handy to have. They're beautiful baskets. Oh, they are, yeah. I think they're really, they're, they're, they're the real traditional racing pigeon basket, aren't they? Yeah, and then your feed here, again, no lie. It's yeah. all, all Van Roby. All Van Roby, so it'll have the purity here, that have some barley here, and have best all around. While the pigeons are on their eggs down below, or if they're not breeding, they will get barley, the purity, and best all around. This is a new breeding mix. Some of the pigeons, there's a couple of youngsters up there that I give them that new breeding mix from uh, from Van Roby's. A lot of hemp seed in it, it's quite good. And this is your De Pure here? No, that is a diet mix. So there's a difference between diet and De Pure? Yeah, the De Pure is mostly, there's a lot of barley and stuff in it, you know? Oh yeah. And they then the- They don't like barley. No? no. I love it. No, they don't okay, like barley. Okay, and, and uh, the- What we have here then are different type of grits, that's just a natural grit. You ever put grit on the feed? Sometimes. There's a multi grit that the pigeons love. I don't know is it a grit or what it is, but they love it. And then I'd have sometimes I will put on the um, the redstone. Just the redstone. Yeah. So to be honest with you, Ryan, what I do, you know, just try to keep it all simple for myself as well. I want to mix them all together, mix the three of them together, and I, before I used to have separate with the pick brick, put it all together now and give it into them. Now you put it all together? Yeah, mix it all together and give it to them, it doesn't make any difference. Photo, I see you even got your own little photo box. Absolutely. Does that drive you nuts or what? Yes. Tricky, isn't it? Very much so. I'm only, I'm only learning how to do it now. We've only just recently downloaded uh, Photoshop and so on. So I'm only in the process of learning. Um, I just purchased a camera there a while ago. So uh, Keep calm when you do it, Derek. Oh Keep yeah, calm. you feel like throwing it out the window now at times. Oh yeah. But um, it makes a great difference. I always As opposed to photographing a pigeon in an aviary. Big difference. Well, you know what they say about a picture? It speaks a thousand words. Yes, it does. And you've got the pigeons that do that. They not, yeah. not only do they look good, but man, they perform. Here's some of the stuff that I would give the pigeons. I would follow very much the, uh, the Schroeder Tollison program on, uh, on racing. Okay. I think it's simple. And you know what, you don't have to be very clever or highly intelligent or anything like that to, to read the book and just follow what it is. We would give them the, uh, you know, whatever it, you need to give them after, whether it's a, a, a gastral problem or a head problem. Um, when they come back from a race, you, you'll know by the pigeons if they're off, you know what to give them. That'll bring them back around again mm. for the following week. Okay. So it's important that you, that's administered to them on a Monday or a Tuesday. Do you use vets or no? No. No. You're, no. The, you're the own, your own doctor. Well, look, I just try to keep it simple, but you know, like I said to you on the site over, if, uh, if the pigeons are vaccinated properly, properly does away with 90% of stuff. Oh, there you go. E. coli and salmonella is a killer. Killer, so cleanliness is, a, is a very important, very important. There you have it, Derek Walsh. Cleanliness is important, good grits, good minerals. Clean food, clean water, and 
you know, just keep on top of the pigeons. You've got to be watching them the whole time. Um, and reminder, eh? Don't forget, eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables. Very important. There you go. Derek Walsh. Thanks, my man. Okay, Ryan. Hey guys, Ryan, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. We hope you enjoyed that amazing loft tour. Please, reminder to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Until the next loft tour, thanks for flying with me. Bye for now.